Positive, Stephanie here with So So Crafty. Today is Sunday, December 18th. How is everyone doing? I hope you're doing well. Merry Christmas. And to those who celebrate other things, no matter what you celebrate, I hope you have a wonderful time with your family and magical winter holidays. So it's been a while and I missed all you guys. <laughs> it's been almost a month and I'm sorry for that. The thing is, is that it's just, it's been pretty busy, pretty crazy. There's been a lot of illness, a lot of travel, social commitments, more illness. <laughs> Not me personally, but um, family members. So I've wanted to film, but you know, time just gets away. And, but, and now today, my son is actually sick again, but you know, what can you do? <laughs> I'm going to film. Anyway, <clears throat> so I have worked on a lot of things because it's been like a month and I finished a few things and I have some haul, a lot of stuff to share. So let's get to it. So the first thing I worked on after the last video was Celtic Autumn by Lavender and Lace. And I worked on that the whole week before Thanksgiving and I really didn't get that much work on it because I was busy with cooking and cleaning and stuff. But I worked on it then, and I will insert a picture of what it looked like before. And and then after, I worked on that some more besides. I worked on it another, I guess, three days to put on the uh, metallics. And I've been working on it about two days to beat it. And as you can see, the beating is in progress. Yeah. Everything below the scroll is already beaded, so I'm almost done. This is stitched on 28 count vintage country mocha cashel by Zweigart. And five colors of beads on here. So, yeah, a lot of beads. <laughs> Hoping to finish it tonight. And next time I should definitely have an FO of that to show you. And then after that, I worked on, well, it was December. No, no, I'm sorry. So before December rolled around, I worked on Aphrodite by Marabilia. I'll insert a picture of what it looked like before. This is stitched on 32 count Zeus's Domain by Under the Sea Fabrics, Belfast. And currently is. Sorry about all the dark threads. But basically I worked on the, the shell area, especially over here. And it was kind of tedious to tell you the truth. I worked on it in about three days, like the, um, the remaining days in November, that short week or whatever, and three or four days on the pink Pale pink, pale purple, white, and I did not get quite as far as I wanted, but you know, I made some decent progress. I'd say the, the bottom half of it is close to finished. So I am looking forward to getting back to it next year and finishing it, <laughs> hopefully before April or so. And then after that, I worked on something that I finished, so we'll save that. And then December rolled around, so. I picked up The Spirit of Christmas by Lavender and Lace. I'll insert a picture of what it looks like before. I'm stitching this one, 32 count Belfast in the Dwarf colorway that I picked for this plus. And here's my current progress. So as you can see, he is pretty darn close to finished. I worked on this four days in December, did this a wreath up here and more of this bow and his hat, of course, the holly on his hat. The only thing that's left is I need to put in the candle flames right there and there. And I need to do like his face, of course, and more of his beard and everything. And the, his belt buckle, which is done in metallic, and then the star, which is done in metallic. So I am going to try to finish this, well, this week. <laughs> This coming week, <laughs> before Christmas, basically. We'll see. 
And then after that, I worked on, well, I had a, a stitching meetup at the library. And I took, uh, well, I actually forgot my stitching. <laughs> so I had to go home and get it. And I picked up a, a project that was very easy to count. So that was the uh, 12 Days of Christmas by Joan Elliott. I had to do some of the gold metallic borders, so. Here it is. It kind of looks complete, doesn't it? <laughs> it's not. Well, what I did is I did the, the gold metallic here in the bottom. See that gold metallic on the borders, those long lines? And I finished all that. That was one day, or maybe it was two days. Yeah, it was two days I worked on it, and I finished the, uh, the gold metallic. So what's left now is the French knots and the beads. I'll work on it after Christmas and hopefully finish it before New Year's. Excuse me, I have to sneeze. Okay, so that's it for whips, and now we'll get into my FOs. So the first couple days in December, I made this little ornament. Oliver's first Christmas 2014, backdated it. <laughs> So this pattern is from the Stony Creek Magazine, summer 2015, I think. And it's the one with the Santa stocking on the cover. <laughs> I used 34 count linen and I, you know, altered it a little bit to, you know, personalize it. Backed it with this fabric, which happened to be one of the only Christmas fabrics in my stash. <laughs> I would have liked to have gone to the fabric store and, and bought like a cute train fringe or something, but I just wanted to get it done. It was my, um, it was a project for Stitch What's over with the Cross Stitch It's Fun group, so. And then I made cording from the red, the, the DMC that was used in the uh, chart, as well as white or something. I guess I used white. I think I used Blanc. Pretty sure that's Blanc. And I followed uh, Ivana, the Twisted Stitcher, her tutorial for the pillow ornament and also her tutorial for cording. I don't have a cording drill though, so I just I twisted it by hand and I used a pen cap. Oh, actually I used a Sharpie <laughs> with a cap on um, as a weight to like drag it down in the middle when I was done twisting and that worked out pretty well. I wouldn't, wouldn't mind getting one of those little uh, cording drills though, they're pretty cool. I'm really happy with how this turned out. My son loves it, let him play with it, which was a big mistake. He started ripping off the uh, cording. <laughs> that was by far the most um, tedious process, you know, part of putting this thing together, sewing on the cording. And it's basically, you know, done by hand with tiny little stitches and it's pretty secure. I mean, you can pull at it. It's not going to go anywhere, but, you know, if you have a, a toddler, like, yanking at it, you know, <laughs> that's a different matter. <clears throat> and then my other FO is Gigi by Nora Corbett, or as I call her, Fleur de la Cour. <laughs> this is stitched on 32 count Nyx Lugana from Under the Sea Fabrics. So I uh, did an alteration on the hair, obviously, because, well, as I was stitching this pattern, I just, I was getting sick of all the black. And then I was kind of in a Harry Potter frame of mind because of the whole stitch with thing. And I was like, hmm, her tall, willowy stature and her, her, uh, her blue outfit made me think of a uh, Flora Delacour. So I decided to make her a blonde. <laughs> and... The beading didn't take long, getting close. So the beads, almost all of them are petite beads and they were so much fun to attach. They fit so nicely on the 32 count fabric. 
And they're mostly attached in like repeating color patterns, so I didn't have to reference the chart too much. And I attached the small one to the half cross, and then up here are these big, like, big jewels. <laughs> Those were attached with a full cross, you know, just for stability, because they're so big and heavy. The beating only took about two hours. All in all, this project took nine days. Yeah, and the little, this little ornament, it took two days plus a couple hours for finishing, fully finishing. So I didn't sign this because I am planning to stitch something on the other half of the fabric, another witch, <laughs> next year. Really pleased with how she turned out. And the color is exactly what I wanted for the fabric, for the background. So that was cool. All right, so that's it for whips. And now let's, and FOs. <laughs> and now let's move on to, I guess what? I have something knitting related, but I'll show you that at the end. So, excuse me, let me grab my haul. So, I ordered something from A Stitch in Time in Saginaw, Michigan in October, late, very late October. And I guess there was a delay or something, but I finally got it. And this is what it is. Judith Kirby Victorians. So as some of you may be aware, these patterns are out of print, but as you can see, these were photocopies, which were copied with permission of the artist, Judith M. Kirby, and they are sold only by this shop in Saginaw. So I found out about the availability of these patterns, Judith Kirby patterns from the blog, Reading Stitching at Blogspot, which is written by Vicki. Hi, Vicki, if you're watching, thank you so much for putting this stuff on your blog because I wanted these patterns for a long time, but I was not willing to pay the out-of-print out uh, eBay prices. So, yeah, this was awesome <laughs> to pick them off at a fair price. And I love them. I will stitch them together on one piece, like such continuous. Okay, so after Thanksgiving, I ordered something from Cecilia Samplers in the LNS that I've heard mentioned on the false tube, and they're in, forgive me, somewhere in the Midwest, <laughs> I'm not really sure. But they are the only ones who have this pattern. Cherry Wood Design Studio, I am a stitcher. I need to be creative to see the design come to life, watch colors unfold on linen, never a day complete without needle and thread, a connection and gift to the past, a gift, connection to the past, a gift for the future, a talent no one can take from me, I am a stitcher. I love that. And I will pick out my own colors to do it in and everything. I think D Stitcher is stitching this one next year. Really, she's kitted it up, so maybe I will too. <laughs> And then, what is it that Annette always says? No trap, no chart can travel alone. <laughs> Annette Baker. I hope you guys are watching her on, on uh, YouTube. We're gonna do a little stitch along in the new year with the King Arthur's Court pattern, so that'll be fun. So, I also ordered this pattern. Blend in place, rim, lum, and gloom on Halloween. Nice spooky pattern. <laughs> this has been on my wish list for a very long time, so I figured I might as well get it. 25% off, why not? <laughs> and then in my last video, I talked about having ordered the Winterfell fabric. Well, I got it in the mail. Winterfell, Belfast. Yeah, here it is. It's a pretty fabric. What does it look like to you? Blue, huh? <laughs> pretty much blue with some brown. That's how I describe it. It does not look like the one I saw at the show. I wonder if the one I saw at the show was uh, Waverly Youth or was mislabeled as linen or something, because that one was definitely gray. 
Yeah, I did a false toss, but this is not going to work for Stargazer. <laughs> so that's twice I've ordered hand-dyed fabric online and been burned. <laughs> I mean, maybe burned isn't the word. This is a pretty fabric, and I will use it for something, but not for Stargazer. But I looked around. Oops, dropped it. Anyway, so I looked around Facebook and online and... I found something I liked, which led me to call the um, Bush Mountain Stitchery store, and this was only yesterday that I called them. <laughs> and so I had a lovely chat with the owner, and I we talked about fabric for a while, and she helped me uh, find a, a pattern from her stash that she thinks will work, and I hope it will. <laughs> Hopefully I will have it uh, soon and I will show you next time. <laughs> and then, is that it for my stitchy stash? Oh, no, actually. Well, I went to um, stitch night at my l &S in Stitches in Alexandria, Virginia, and I bought some Krennic and some beads, which, I mean, you can see them on here, basically. <laughs> Five different colors of beads and gold Krennic. Krennic 002. So basically all that stuff is used or almost used. And then there's one other thing. Let me run and get it. Okay, I'm back. So I ordered from Fusion Beads over the Thanksgiving weekend, I think it was, and I spent a grand total of Cut your pearls, people. Four dollars and eleven cents. <laughs> so I ordered a whole mess of these beads. They're like little flower beads. Ooh, uh, the color. I mean, they're all strung, so it's kind of hard. But you see that? It's kind of like. Like a pearlescent little flower petal kind of. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I hope that'll work on um, the Queen Mermaid. We'll see. And then I ordered, I did a little conversion for the uh, treasures on the, the reindeer, which I'm planning to stitch a whole bunch of them next year. So <laughs> my friend Sumira said that she was interested in stitching the reindeer. So I already own several of the patterns, not all of them, and she wants to stitch all of them too. So we're going to share our patterns. Like, you know, I'll lend mine to hers and she'll lend hers to me. So <laughs> that's cool. So there's this one. This is like a red bicone. Preciosa crystal bicone. It's pretty, huh? Light Siam AB. And then I got a lit like a mini bicone in the fuchsia color. Several of those. Those are four millimeter. The red ones are six millimeter. Here's some more. I'm not gonna take them out, it's <laughs> too difficult. These are um, emerald four millimeter bicone crystals. And these are, uh, this is an amethyst teardrop, 11 millimeters. Uh, there you go, see that? Pretty, huh? And last but not least, the bicone rose four millimeter. Yeah. All that stuff, four dollars and eleven cents, people. <laughs> I probably don't need to tell you how expensive nail hole treasures can be. So yeah. 
very happy with that little uh, haul right there. Fusion beads for the win. I wasn't able to convert everything. There were a few like colors and whatever that they didn't have, but I was able to pick up the vast amount of what I will need to stitch another five reindeer for a few bucks. <laughs> Actually, the most expensive piece was this, this big uh, string of little flower beads that this was like a buck fifty or something, and there's like a hundred on here. So I don't need that many, but this was like the smallest thing that I could buy it in. So. But compared to like what I'm subbing it for, I think they would cost like $35 or $40 because you just need like so many of them. So. <laughs> I'm pretty excited to like start stitching the Queen Mermaid and see how, how all this stuff kind of works out. So that's it for my haul. And now I guess we'll talk a little bit about plans. So Christmas is coming up. Got some sewing to do, some gift wrapping, <laughs> some <laughs> cooking and <laughs> cleaning. <laughs> but uh, in between, I will try to work on my Santa this week. And after Christmas, I will certainly work on the 12 days of Christmas. So after Christmas, Stitch Mania is having a daily rotation sale, the 12 days of Stitchmas. And the, you know, the daily themes follow the song. So I'm going to be working on my uh, 12 days project for that. And hopefully I'll finish it by New Year's. <laughs> I don't want to do drag it through the whole 12 days. It's just some fresh knots and beads. It shouldn't take that long. And I'll work on some other projects too as I can fit them into the theme. So I might do a vlog for that. I'm not sure about it though. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you could tell me in the comments if you really want me to do a vlog or if you don't want me to, you know. <laughs> um, and also, I, I want to do like a wrap up, 2016 wrap up and 2017 plans. And I want to show you guys my Christmas stuff. I have a lot of like handmade decorations and everything. And right now I'm not really prepared to like <laughs> show all that stuff, but <laughs> I do want to. Maybe I will do the vlog. That would be a good chance to like show, all that, show off all that stuff. Okay, it's settled. I'm going to do a vlog. <laughs> After Christmas. The nice thing is my uh, hubby is taking some time off work beginning uh, Tuesday, actually. So it'll be a nice long, um, you know, chance to relax and do some stuff <laughs> a couple weeks. <laughs> also, I need to do some framing before Christmas. So I did place an order recently from pictureframes.com. It's shipped. I should have it soon, hopefully, within a day or two. I may actually, well, tonight I'm going to work on Autumn and try to finish her. <laughs> but if I have any time beyond that, I think I may uh, mount some of the projects I need to frame. And then once we get through December, it's going to be January, New Year. I'm excited. Are you? <laughs> I'm ready for 2017 to be over. So, And I've got big plans for 2017. I'm going to do a little crazy January thing. I know Cowgirl Kate mentioned that in her last video. That's like a, well, my reference for it is from the blogosphere. So... Basically, it's like guilt-free January. You start whatever you want. So I'm going to start four projects, and I'm going to do like a five-day rotation So, and mix a few whips in there as well, I think. <laughs> I think that's the plan. I actually made some plans for my rotation going up until like mid-year. I'm going to stick with the weekly rotation because I really liked it. I felt like I got a lot done that way. It kept me organized. And, yeah, 
I will not be doing the any sort of like crazy start thing <laughs> next year. <laughs> Other than crazy January, I'm gonna be doing that, but the what I learned this year during the year of starts is that serial starting is just it's not for me. I don't like having ten billion whiffs. So right now I have like eight maybe. Something like that. And that's a pretty good number, I think. So I'll probably have like 12 or something in January, and that's cool. And when I get to like Mania, I do want to have 15 projects for Mania, so I may start a few things to like bring me up to 15, but they will be small projects. But this is getting more into my plans for 2017, so <laughs> we'll save that for next time. So I just want to wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas again, Happy Holidays, no matter what you celebrate. And don't forget to enter my giveaway. It's open until Christmas, December 25th. Watch my last video for the details. Leave a comment on that video. That's video number 24, saying uh, which prize you want. And I will do a drawing on the day after Christmas or whatever. All right, that is it for all my stitching, unless you are interested in my knitting. I do have something to share, actually something that is uh, current, <laughs> a current project, fancy that. So, excuse me, this is Green Away, patterned by Amy Herzog, and I stitched it, I, I knitted in uh, Knit Picks Gloss DK. The uh, neckline is rolling something terrible, it needs to be blocked. <laughs> I'll probably do that this evening. So I, I knit this like last year and it was fun doing the beaded section. But I never, I started sewing it together. <laughs> I sewed in one sleeve, but that was it. There's a lot of seams on this because there's a sewing in hem. The way I like to do knitted hems is I cast on provisionally and I, I knit my hem and I do the turning row and then later when it's time to sew it down, I take out the provisional leaving the live loops and sew down the live loops to the inside of the sweater sort of splitting the stitches so that you can't really see it on the outside. It's just less bulky that way because you don't have the bulk of the cast on. And I didn't have to seam the shoulders because I always just do a three needle bind off there. Hi, Oliver. Okay, I'm back. So the other uh, knitting thing I wanted to share is the sweater that I'm wearing. So this is called, the pattern is called Red Red Wine. Let me move the camera. I knit it back in 2011 and I used, well the pattern is by Vladimir Teriokin from Taki Modern Romance. It's got these like billowy sleeves, yeah. <laughs> kind of like a poet style thing and this like whole like necktie and everything. <laughs> Fun details. From the Ataki Modern Romance booklet, I used Elan Limited Edition Finesse Yarn, which is a merino tensile blend. Took a heck of a lot of yardage, over 1,300 yards, 1,320. I guess that's what the baggy sleeve business and everything. <laughs> I'll show you the, the side and the back. And what was this? Well, it was supposed to be a Christmas sweater but I didn't actually get to finish it for Christmas because I was busy with gift making, so... <laughs> In many years, there's been a little something that uh, was referred to as Stephanie's Sweatshop. <laughs> with all the uh, handmade gifts I made. This year, I'm not making that many, but... Uh, 
Yeah, so no sweatshop this year. <laughs> so this project, I, I wound up finishing it, or, you know, in February or something, by February. And I did make some modifications. I shortened the sleeves because, as written, they were going to swallow my hands. Maybe that's why they're so baggy. I should have made the, the cuff, you know, gathered or whatever. Oh well. <laughs> Honestly, these baggy uh, sleeves are, are not terribly practical, and if they were to like cover your hands, they'd be even more impractical. <laughs> so, I don't know what's up with that. And then, I altered the raglan sleeve shaping to maintain the cable pattern all the way to the shoulder. You see how the pattern just travels all the way up there? Which is the way it was shown in the photograph and not the way it was written in the pattern. And I did a uh, tubular bind off on the cuff, which may have been a mistake because tubular bind offs are stretchy and as you can see, this doesn't need any stretch. There's <laughs> it's super baggy as it is. And then the the neckline and the tie thing is knit separately. So this was like one by one ribbing, a lot of it. <laughs> and then you have to sew it down on the neckline. So a lot of seaming on this one. So the yarn is 60 merino, 40 tensile, four plies, evenly spun around the construction. So the tensile, you've got the drape and the sheen from that and the the warmth, of course, from the wool. And I love the color, the, the baked apple. It's like a really pretty blue-red. So, yeah, I mean, the, the details are cool. The, the tie and the v-neck, the pleated poet sleeves and the cable panels. Nice for Christmas. <laughs> okay, so I guess that's it for my knitting and I will see you guys, well, I guess in around a week or whatever when I start my vlog. <laughs> and I will be back after Christmas to do the wrap up in 2017 preview. All right, again, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, see you soon, bye.